and Shelly and coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, not the Nile, so we came from Africa. I looked over Jordan, what did I see? A band of angels coming for me, because the angels riding in the chariot set of most high. Listen, once again, Wisdom of Solomon, five and 20. His severe wrath, this ain't no, this ain't no lightweight thing. This is gonna be severe wrath from the most high. Shall be sharpened for a sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right Amy thunderbolts go abroad. This death and destruction is going to go abroad. And from the clouds, remember the clouds are the chariots of the Most High, and the angels rolling in the clouds. As from a well drawn bow, that's these missiles. That's the only thing we can think of. We can't even imagine what the Most High is going to bring on them. But it says, as a well-drawn boat, shall they fly to the mark. And they're they not going to miss the mark that the Most High said, you're going to hit a particular spot in this earth. Listen. And hailstones full of wrath shall be cast as out of a stone boat. What kind of hailstones are you going to be able to fight? How are you going to fight hailstones from the most high? In the water of the sea shall rage against them. He's going to raise up the sea against you. You know it's three fourths of the earth is water, is the sea. He's going to raise that up against them. He ain't going to flood them. Remember, he ain't going to destroy the earth with water. That's why he's going to burn them up. And he's coming with fire. But he's telling you that right now, he's going to raise the sea up. It's going to be destroyed. And the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the flood shall cruelly drown them. So he's gonna drown a lot of people. Yeah, a mighty wind, that's that tornado, that's that hurricane, shall stand up against them. You gonna fight this? Come on! So I said, you gotta worry about them angels that's gonna bring the spirit of the most high on this earth to bring forth his judgment. Yet a mighty wind shall stand up against them and like a storm shall blow them away. <laughs> you would have said, like a storm shall blow you away. Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill dealings shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Ill dealings gonna overthrow your mighty thrones that you pridefully think you gonna uphold. Fight the elements of the most high. You can't even fight a snowstorm. He talking about hell. What size hell? I remember one time the most I had hailstones that was 75, 75 pounds coming to this earth. Can you imagine that coming from the sky? The velocity that is coming down and hitting people? Bam, hitting up. I mean, just gonna destroy. He said he gonna put hailstones like that in a bowl. He ain't talking about like really regularly coming down. He gonna make sure that they coming down with force. What'd he say in verse 20? His severe wrath. Come on. Y'all better recognize somebody got to hear the word of the Most High. Hmm. Go to that book of Amos 5 and 18. Amos 5 and 18. Woe will be destruction unto you that desire the day of the Most High. He's screaming. It's an explanation point here. Me hollering, all y'all that gotta have all this stuff, stuff. Most High screaming in touch. Say, woe, destruction unto you that desire this day that we are talking about. He said, woe unto you that desire the day of the Most High. To what end is it for you? To what end is it for you? The day of the Most High is darkness and not light. You hear this? Gonna be dark. You better understand this light that's shining bright. You better take as much as you can in while the opportunity is here because he gonna bring that darkness to a level that you're not gonna even believe. That you hear it. Say, woe to you that desire the day of the most high. To what end is it for you? The day of the most high is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion. You running from a lion? And a bear met you. A bear met him. You went from the lion and then a bear met you. Bam. 
and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Woo! Poison snake bite you. Shall not the day of the Most High be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it? You hear this? So I say you ain't gonna better see the sun, you're gonna see the, the moon, you're gonna better see the stars. Then you're gonna be darkness from all the destruction that he's gonna bring on this earth. And y'all playing around. Better wake up. Better give your life to the most high. And do what's right. Come back to his commandments. His law such commandments. Habakkuk, the third chapter. In the third verse. Becca three and three. The Most High came from Teman, and the Holy One from the Mount Paran, Shalat. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hands, and there was the hiding of his power. He had horns coming, a power coming out of his hands. That's why you see sometimes Esau know about this. That's why he be doing this thing, certain things. Things be coming out of man's hand on his fiction, movies, and so forth. He had power coming out of his hands. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove a son of the nations. See? And everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. He can make all these kingdoms, little big kingdoms, little kingdoms, everybody gonna bow down. They gonna bow, like I said, you gonna bow down now, you gonna bow later, but you gonna bow down. <laughs> He's gonna bring it forth. You better understand this, and overstand this point. Look, for all the things that's gonna happen, when, when Quebec heard this verse 16, he said, when I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice. He said, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, he said, that I might rest in, that, in the day of trouble, that he would be in the grave, West in the day of trouble. It's coming, people. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Oh, yeah. He will invade them with his troops. Who's his troops? Revelation 9 and 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen that's coming with Amashiach Yavashat were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. He coming with 200,000 thousand. That's 200 million angels. Understand this. 200 million angels. He's coming with, right? Well, look. What about the spirits that are here? They're here. He come with 200 million angels. Look, go to Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. He said, there be spirits in the, in the pocket. It's on page 94 if you have the Cambridge University Press and Pocket. Listen, Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. He said, there be spirits. These are angels. Remember, let me go back. Let me show you. Just in case there's someone that's new online. Psalms 104. We're going to go to verse 4 this time who maketh his angels spirits. So it'll say spirits, it'll say angels. It'll say angel, it'll say spirit. So he maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. And that fire is the word of the most high that they bring, that fire. So now, going back to Ecclesiastes 39 and 28, it says, there be spirits, these are angels, that are created for vengeance, which in their fury, this ain't no love, it's fury. Lay on sore strokes, like that amendment that he say going to put on them. In the time of destruction, not love and happiness and joy, in the time of destruction, 
they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Oh yeah, they're gonna appease the wrath of the Most High. Severe wrath, remember we read about that? These angels, these spirits gonna appease the wrath of the Most High. Fire and hell, remember he said gonna take the big boulders of hell they're going to put them in like a slingshot and shoot, shoot them to this earth. Fire and hell and famine, these things we've been reading about. And death is coming, death and destruction. We done heard about that too. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandments. Hear that? These angels, these spirits gonna rejoice in the commandment of the Most High to bring forth the destruction in these last days. As he set righteousness up on this earth, they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth. See these spirits, these angels are on this earth right now, all around us. When need is, they're right here on the earth when there's a need. Oh yeah, y'all better understand and overstand this point. And when their time has come, when the most I say, I need you, they shall not, I repeat, they shall not transgress his word. They gonna do exactly what he say do. That's why we gotta be pleased in the most high. We gotta be pleased in him. In all ways, shapes, and forms, people, that's why you got to come out of sin and do the laws of the Most High so that this can befall you. Psalms 34 and 7. Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Most High encamps round about them that fear him and deliver them. You hear that? So the angels around us. Those that fear the Most High and deliver them. <laughs> Look at verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Most High heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. <laughs> That's before he told us. The angel of the Most High encamped around about them that fear him. Because you fear the Most High, you have enough sense as a poor man to cry unto the Most High. That's when Jeremy had pity on us as a nation. He hear him. Hear what it says? And the angel of the Most High encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. That's what you got to be concerned about. Remember, for all you that don't know, now you don't know because... There are those that really we get an understanding in the things that were made. A lot of people don't know what was made out of Mashak Abishai made. Look. Look at uh, Colossians 1 and 16, we'll be right to the point. For by him, Mashak Abishai, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible, visible, and invisible. So he made things visible that you can see, and he made things invisible that we cannot see. Whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So he made things visible and invisible. And those invisible spirits, those invisible angels that you can't see, they come. Some are already here, we read about them. Ready for the commandment of the Most High. Oh yeah, I've, I've encountered them. I've encountered them in my life. James 2 and 13. James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy 
You know, you gotta have judgment without mercy. You know what mercy is? Not getting something that you do deserve to get. You say, we have judgment without mercy. That have shown no mercy. See? The judgment coming upon you because you ain't showed us no mercy. You're going to have judgment without mercy. Those who have not shown no mercy. The mercy rejoices against judgment. Look. Let me show you something. We're going to go into the Van Compact Bible Dictionary. What does it say? For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shown no mercy. Right? So ain't no mercy. Because you ain't shown no mercy, so ain't no mercy. Listen to what they say. We're going to look up Edom. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. We're going to look up Edom. E-D-O-M. This is what it says. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments and gives scriptures to back it up. This from the so-called white man, the Edomites. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites. Once again, she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. There it is for you. They tell you themselves. Since you, you know you don't believe me. Well, you don't believe the word of the Most High. But what did he say? James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy. This judgment coming, he's not going to have any mercy that have shown no mercy. You ain't showing no mercy to us, the children of Israel. That's what we're concerned with because he's going to have mercy on Jacob. He said he had no mercy on nobody else. Isaiah 14 and 1. This is who going to have mercy on. For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob. Hear that? And will yet choose Israel. That's what it says. That's what we have mercy on. Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11 chapter. Well, yeah, we gotta, we gotta keep it real. Cause I mean, it's, when you look at it, I mean, come on, the way we just being slaughtered in the street. No mercy. Hold your hands up, you get shot. Hold your hands down, you're getting killed. And plus the most I have been written in the curses that he would have no mercy. In the old or the young. Jeremiah 11 and 9. And the most I said unto me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Conspiracy. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers which refused to hear my words. Two thirds of the children of Israel which refused to hear the Most High's words. And they went after other idols to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah, dealing with all 12 tribes, the northern tribes and the southern tribes, have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. We broke the laws of the Most High. A lot of you talking about we ain't got to follow the Most High. You, ain't nothing, you have nothing to do with the Most High because you're saying, point blank, you're not under His laws. Not our laws, His laws. He took the time to give us 613 laws. Plus the Bible is an instruction manual. Period. Therefore, thus said the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Behold, I will bring evil upon them which they shall not be able to escape. You hear this, Israel? Oh yeah, ain't nobody crying about this, but he said gonna bring evil upon us, the children of Israel, that we're not gonna be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, though we cry unto him, I will not hearken unto them. That's the only time the Most I ever had pity on us. When we cried to him, he said, I ain't gonna have no pity on them. 
See, I ain't gonna listen to them. Listen. 